Hi everybody, thank you for tuning into another video on TK's Tech Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at four game controllers, well actually two game controllers in two different colours, um, from GameSir. Uh, so this is their new Nova series of controllers. Um, they've got two different models, they've got the Nova and then they've got the Nova Lite. I'll talk through all the differences as we go through the video. We'll open them up, check them out, um, test them out on at least the Nintendo Switch and maybe Android as well because they're multi-platform controllers. Um, but so it will take too long to test through everything um, but you'll get the idea because it's going to be a lot of the stuff that you've seen in other videos we're testing on um, um, different formats main thing is these controllers uh, they're currently available on pre-order um, and I'll go through the details of where you can get them I'll post description links etc we'll just cr start cracking them open and we'll talk through our differences um, so Four different colours. We've got the light in space purple and stellar white. We've got the main uh, controller, the Nova controller, the non-light version in a uh, white. I think this is a, the colours aren't written on here, um, but I think this is going to be uh, a retro white. And uh, this is called neon teal, I believe. That the two colours here, and this one looks the most exciting to me. I must admit. Uh, but let's start going through some of the differences. So. The Nova controller, uh, and as I said, both of them, they're all multi-platform controllers, so they support Switch, PC, Nintendo, um, Android, iOS, and Steam as well. Um, but this one is more geared towards the Nintendo Switch, and you'll see why as we go through the video. This one, predominantly, they, they say they're targeting PC, but it also supports other platforms as well. All the same controllers, uh, same platform, sorry. Uh, in terms of connectivity, they both support tri-connectivity modes, so Bluetooth, 2.4 gig, uh, and also uh, wired modes. Um, they both, ABXY buttons are remappable, so as you're switching across platforms, you're going from Nintendo Switch to uh, PC, for example, uh, you want your ABXY buttons to be different layout. Um, one thing you'll notice here is the ABXY buttons on this one, again, why this is more geared towards Nintendo Switch, um, is in exactly the same format as the Nintendo Switch controller. Now I've got the uh, Pro Controller here, so we can just bring that in for comparison later on as well. But you can see ABXY, ABXY, the button format is the same. Um, so it is nice to be able to switch button formats when you're playing cross platforms, because it's not just the letters base, actually what the button presses do. So um, we've got, uh, this one has wideband HD haptic feedback. So HD rumble was something uh, that was the term that was introduced by Nintendo when they released a the Nintendo Switch and it was effectively describing what is haptic feedback, which gives you the sense of interacting with something in the in a real world. Um, and I think they use an example of ice cubes, for example, right? Um, rattling ice cubes in a glass. You could get that sort of an effect from their Joy-Cons. Um, and so this controller, the, the main controller, does uh, have HD rumble feature. Uh, the light one just has standard rumble, although it is uh, adjustable. Um, it's not. Um, it's not got that HD rumble feature. So it's got multifunction uh, vibration. Yes, um, and uh, that's that's one key difference between these two. Um, the other thing that's probably worth noting is the uh, macro buttons. So this one does not have any macro buttons on the back. This one does, and we'll see all of these when we open them up. Um, so you've got a macro button on the front of both of them, but uh, or a mode button, I think it is, but on the back here, you've got a um, set of macro buttons. These are programmable, so you can switch, um, uh, but, you know, you can program uh, turbo functions or remapping the primary buttons, uh, and also setting combo button presses onto them, so one click will press multiple buttons as well. Let's open these up because I'm really keen to get these out of the box. So we're just going to open all of them up. I'll get rid of all the packaging. Oopsie daisy. And we'll check them all out. I'll try, or I'll try every single one. Now, wow. Look at that. It's got its own case. It's in its own case. How nice is that? So immediately you've got a controller that you can throw in the bag and have no concerns at all about it getting damaged. That's a hard plastic shell. I love the case, absolutely love that. Immediately love that, never seen that before. Completely molded 
to the what do they call it? injection molding is that what they call it i don't know molded to the shape of the controller exactly we've got a box here hiding at the bottom of the controller that box is now empty let's have a quick look <clears throat> at what's inside the box uh, and i won't do this for both of them because there's no need with they so it looks like the 2.4 gigahertz dongle does not come with the controllers um, unless it's in there which is fine you can buy it on their website as an accessory um, I do have a control uh, one from another um, controller um, but I won't I won't start pairing that in this video I think it was the x10 uh, at least one of them um, had the 2.4 gig dongle let's just make sure um, there is absolutely nothing left in the box so you can see nothing there uh, I'll get the paperwork. I'm just squeezing that to make sure I haven't missed the dongle at all. I definitely have not missed the dongle. And it also doesn't tell you that the dongle's in the box. So it's not like we've been shortchanged. Right. Um, again, these are pre-release. These are not um, These are not out to buy yet. They're available on pre-order only. Um, so if things change, they change. Who knows? They may throw the, the receiver into the box for at least for the main one rather than the light one. Let's get one of the lights out. So this is the retro white. We're opening up now the stellar white. So this is pretty much the equivalent, I suppose you could say. Again, really, really nice touch. They have included a, a plastic housing for this controller as well. So this is in its own nice protected. Aha, uh -huh, I've just seen something by the way. I've seen something in here that I haven't seen in here. There's an extra little space here, which tells me this one might have a USB receiver with it, which is interesting. Anyway, well, because this is geared more towards PC, right? And on the box, you can see there, it says for PC first. This one, actually the main uh, advertisement on here that is for Nintendo Switch and supports other formats. So that's the key difference there. Um, a little, uh, oh, there's a little uh, QR code for an operating manual there, which is nice. So they've even kept the packaging light. I like that. Less wastage, right? Less wastage. They've got a QR code. Go online if you want to look at the manual. You haven't got a manual kicking around. That should just be the stance standard for everything. Because if you're buying one of these, you've probably been online. Let's open up the other colors as well. And then we'll get on to testing. We'll test a couple of them out. We'll test one of the lights. We'll test one of the main ones. Obviously, we're going to test this main one just because it looks so cool. I'm going to talk through some of the other features in a minute. There are a couple of other features which you may or may not have noticed while I'm going through this. This one here is Space Purple. I think it may also be known as Midnight Blue, but Space Purple. So it's not going to be black. I expect that to have a little purple tinge. We may or may not pick it up on the camera, but we'll check it out anyway. And the last one here is the one that they have sent to me uh, as it was available last of the, th of the four um, called Neon Teal. And this one just looks so cool in the pictures and on their website. No doubt it's going to be awesome. Again, another, uh, another hard case for this one as well. Now the transparency on this is, is it the same? Roughly, I don't know. It's because of the oh, it's because of the color of the controller looks different, but it's exactly the same. Now, if these are exactly the same size, these are going to be the same. See, on the back, there's something there as well. I think there's something inside the case. I think it is a dongle. Just to be sure, right? That packaging is exactly the same. I'm going to open this up. Nothing in the box. What have we? I've got a big pile of boxes next to me. I kid you not, because I've just been throwing them on the side as I've been recording. Again, USB-C cable, nice quality USB-C cable, by the way, not a flimsy cheap one, a really nice quality USB-C cable with their logo on it. And then the game sir sticker there um, and then some paperwork. It would be great to get rid of this stuff and just go the way they did with the light, to be honest. Reduces the packaging size. And you notice in the lights, there was no USB cable unless that also is in here, which would just be amazing. But... I don't know. Let's open it up and find out. Oh, what are we going to open first? Ah, 
what we're going to open first exciting we're going to go with this one because i just can't wait actually I'm save the best to last let's start with their retro white now that is giving me goosebumps why because it reminds me of a game boy i absolutely this is the dmg01 game boy colors the original the original off-white with the purple face buttons and the gray oh gosh what have they done the black d-pad and this thing feels so nice this thing feels so so nice um wow so one of the key differences while i've got it out now just to tell you if you haven't already seen is uh this thing has rgb lighting around the glide rings so when we turn this thing on we should see some really nice lighting effects through here you can't see it you can't tell that it's in place but it is in place the light doesn't have it the normal controller does have it another thing to indicate that this is really geared towards the switch by the way is the four indicator lights here this is what you see on the pro controller where you've got the four indicator lights here to tell you which player you're selecting we'll try and pair them both up maybe just to see what happens if you get player one player two type of thing going on um maybe we'll pair up all three controllers <clears throat> um but the nova light doesn't have that the indicator light on the nova light is based on the actual lighting on the game sir logo there that home button which this one doesn't have this one has a separate button instead uh, and there it is there's the dongle that we were looking for so the dongle comes with that one not with this one but chances are i can probably pair this to that dongle anyway so let's uh, have a quick look at the dongle there it is um it's got a pairing button on the back nice that's like a midnight blue color as well with a little orange uh, detail i like that color combination it's very very nice very striking um, and that fits nicely in the case so you can just take it with you and how awesome is this because what i'm going to try and do is put this in here and first modification modification complete uh -huh. i have modified by switching case how geeky is that anyway there we go <laughs> so let's get out the other colors let's go for the um this was it was called purple oh wow look at that you can see it that's not black right you know what black looks like because that's black and that is a midnight blue um color they called it stella purple oh that is stella no space purple sorry space purple very spacey very nice very stellar again same color combination as that key that that dark midnight bluey color on uh, let's get it out it's the same color isn't it it is the same color you can see that there and the orange the orange pops against this blue completely also pops against the white i'm loving the color combination so far i love the white on black or, or the black on white rather and then the the fact that they didn't keep the actual um body of that stick um black they've been a bit exciting and they've kept it orange and it looks like it's popping I love it the analog sticks have got lovely lovely grips on them exactly like the um xbox controllers they're convex but they're deep dished they're in they're not popping out as you can see off the surface so it's best of both worlds in my opinion this sort of layout where your thumbs nest or nightly nicely in them you get traction from that little dimple inside and also you're getting a lot of traction from the grip on the edges nice thick grip there on the edges um which reminds me i think i've got some accessories as well actually which will pop open and then saving the best to last there it is i should run drum roll for that that thing is gorgeous the neon teal nova controller ladies and gentlemen you're seeing it here i don't know if you've seen it first because i haven't checked if there's any other videos on it because i don't um but this is going to be available in one month for you to own and have in your hands like i've got it in my hands again uh, hall effect sticks um you've got rgb lighting on the glide rings um, we've got remappable back macro buttons here as well uh, the no micro switches which is fine and um, they feel really really nice anyway so we've got really responsive conductive d-pad uh, conductive pad buttons here right, the membrane buttons whatever you want to call them d-pads feel awesome they're shaped awesome as well all the d-pads are the same on both controllers they've got this deep dish sort of thing going on where as you know i've said it in a lot in the other videos i like the way my thumb sits inside a d-pad and that is nestling in there very very nicely it's got a very very nice feel to it um i'm in love with this one 
as much as this one because this thing is giving me Game Boy vibes. It's taking me back a few years. I won't tell you how old I am. So, <clears throat> on that note, uh, I'm just going to leave these cases here, to be honest, because where am I going to get rid of everything? But I love the fact that these come in plastic shells. Absolutely love it. It's going to make it easy for me to store uh, with my other one million controllers that I've got lying around everywhere. Um, I haven't got the Steam Deck here with me charged, so we won't test that. If you want to see this working on a, a PC or a Nintendo Switch, just give me a shout. Leave a comment, a few comments, and I'll do a video testing them out. But we are going to test them anyway on two platforms. We're going to test them out on Switch and Android. First things first, let's test them out on a Nintendo Switch. So I've got here a... Oh, by the way, just before I do that... Indicator lights here. I know it's only got one light on these ones, which is the circle, which is going to be this one, right? It's got like an RGB lighting in there, I suppose. Um, it hasn't got RGB on the glide ring, no problem. But the main thing here, right, is um, this will just light up in different colors, like it did with with the X10 and some of the other videos I did, where uh, oh, you can see my face there. <clears throat> Horrible reflection. Is that um, the light will light up different colors to indicate which platform you're connected to? So, red and yellow for I think red is for Switch and green for X inputs when you're on a PC, maybe, and yellow will be for Android. Right, so let's get this thing on. I'm going to get the Joy Cons off of here, don't want them interfering whatsoever. And you can just see how stellar that is. That's basically white, like the Joy Cons, exactly the same thing going on there. Now, if Nintendo had the bottom of that Joy-Con orange, that would be like its sibling, younger sibling of that, wouldn't it? But it is pretty much the same black on white effect as the white Joy-Cons, which I think look awesome on the Switch, by the way. Um, so let's get this fired up. If I move that there a bit, hopefully you'll get some less reflection. Right. So. Right. We're in. Now. What we're going to do here is we're going to just turn it on and just see what happens. I'm in a dungeon. It's waiting for a controller to be detected. So I'm just going to go and press. I think I'm just going to press. Oh my God, press the home button. I'm just going to press the home button. Oh, look at that. Look at the lighting on that. Can you see that? How nice is that? That is very, very smooth and graceful. It's got almost like a matte color to it. It's not an in-your-face you know, I'm here lighting up the world sort of thing going on. That's just, oh, wow. Absolutely loving it. It's gone through the purples, the blues, the yellows, the orange. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. Look at that. I like that a lot. That is a really, really, really nice lighting effect. If I cover it there, you can see what's going on. I can feel some HD rumble going on here. What I'm not seeing is any pairing action at the moment. So we need to figure out how we're going to pair this thing. Now, it may be that we've got to plug a cable in first to get it paired. Um, you normally don't need to with these Pro Controllers. You normally turn them on and they're just good to go, right? It's got the screenshot button there as well, like the Nintendo Switch controller, the home button like the Switch controller, plus minus buttons like the Nintendo Switch controller. So you can see this really is, and it is advertised as a Nintendo Switch controller, right? Um, which it really is. It's got a nice little rumble going on while it's trying to pair. Um, maybe I should have looked at, I'm going to hold the home button to see if it goes off. And then I'm going to try and press maybe maybe one of the letters. Right, okay. It is going to be that. That's definitely not the Nintendo Switch mode. So let's just press the home button again. I could pull out the manual and do it, but I'm sure we'll figure it out just by doing it. I'll press the B button. No, it's not that one. One of these is going to go to, one of these is going to be a Nintendo Switch job, right? Let's go figure out which one. I would have just thought it would have been default Switch. X, no. Um, I'm getting the manual. I'm doing it. Get the manual. And the last thing I'm going to do is just get a USB-C cable and plug it in, right? Manual, ABXY, home, blah, blah, blah. Pairing, oh, it's a big, big bit of paper that is, isn't it? Do I really want to do this? Or am I going to... 
I want to pair with Android. No, no, Android. What am I saying? I want to. Come on. I'm going to try A. I didn't try A. I'm guessing A is going to be for Android. Doesn't have to be the case, obviously. It's not going to work either, is it? Let me get USB-C cable. Right, I've got USB-C cable. What I'm going to do quickly is just plug it in and see what happens. Let me turn this one on as well, actually. So see what happens with this one. Well, any of them pair by default, I wonder. Ah, so that one did. This one hasn't. Why? This one's being naughty. Let's just put this one aside. That one looks amazing because it's transparent. The lighting is actually coming through the shell there. Can you see that there? How cool does that look? Yeah. We like that. Mm. I am keen to get them both paired though. Just want to see what happens if I plug this in. Does that work? Is that a little hack? It does. It's paired. So you can see that's working. So I've got the first light for player one. I've got that light for player two. Um, I can switch to player one and player two just by pressing those two buttons because it's waiting for which control it's going to use for this game. Um, and then A when I'm ready. And you can see this game is working absolutely well. You can't see it because I'm covering it, aren't I? Let me get rid of it. There we go. That's much better. Let's get this off. That will just go off itself. And let's test out some Nintendo. And then we'll switch over to Android. So you can see that's working absolutely fine there. There is going to be a way of... Oh, I don't know why I've just done that. There's going to be a way of... Oh, dear. I'm about to get squashed. No! Right, and this is not a demonstration of how to play Zelda. So don't hold it against me. Um, must say this feels very, very nice, very comfortable. Um, in terms of the actual profile, it's very similar to the Nintendo Switch. The triggers and bumpers, they're curved very, very nicely, as you can see there. You've got more of a PlayStation controller type trigger going on here, the way they've designed the size of it. Um, I, I like when the shoulder buttons wrap around the top but they are still very accessible as you can see there um, they're not wrapping around as much as the original pro controller but they are wrapping around nonetheless so they're still there they're still accessible it's just that they're not as um, wrapping around as i would like but there we go lovely lighting effects very very nice you're seeing these pop up more and more now um, rgb lighting and these controllers you've seen a few videos now where i've done i think two at least with with lighting in them um, and this is working perfectly well. Let's quickly see what happens when we connect one of these. So let's try the midnight one. Um, now again, I don't know how I'm going to connect the switch to this. I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm actually just going to plug that in. And see what happens. So it's gone red. It has worked. As you can see that there, it's working absolutely fine. Now when I disconnect it, I don't know if this is going to work wired only or not. So by default it's flashing green. That's an exit input mode because the default mode for this is PC. It's looking for the dongle here at this stage. So one second. Right, this will be interesting. So if I plug this in with a dongle, I wonder if it will work. But obviously the, the ABXY will be the wrong way around, no doubt. But at least we get to test the dongle out as well, right? So in, in 2.4 gigahertz mode. Um, the light is flashing on the dongle there, as you can see. Um, and it may or may not work. I'm trying all sorts of weird stuff here, aren't I? Right. So actually, that's quite cool because it's gone back to red mode again, which means it knows it's on Nintendo Switch. That is connected. Now, it is working. Uh, and I am guess it's working via the dongle and not anything else. Let's just unplug this. Uh, it definitely is working through that, right? I'm going to turn this off. 
by pressing that button, know that it's going to go off. And then we'll do a quick Android test and then we'll wrap up. A is for Android, it's flashing yellow, that's waiting for Android pairing, so we don't want to do that right now. Maybe I'll try B, one of them will flash red, and then we know we're going into a Nintendo Switch mode. It may be that the Switch works in wired mode only. That's not done anything different. Well, not just wired mode, it does work wireless with the actual receiver, so you can plug the receiver into the dock. Well, that's flashing red. Let's see what happens. No, it works. It works absolutely fine. So it's not just wired mode, wireless for Bluetooth is using for switch anyway. And let's see if that's working. That is also working absolutely fine. The buttons are the wrong way around. Um, and there is a way to actually switch. So a couple of things about these controls. You can you can remap ABXY um, with some macro button presses. We won't go through all the button presses in this video. Um, but you can remap ABXY very easily on the fly. Um, as well as being able to adjust the uh, vibration sensitivity. You're not seeing any macro buttons here, as we mentioned earlier. So you can ad adjust the stick dead zone and also um, change vibration intensity on this, all from the controller itself. So it's nice that you've got the ability to change um, some features of the controller to customize to your liking without having to plug into any sort of an app. Um, so there you go, some additional features there for these great controllers as well. The button layout for these on the top, the shoulder buttons and triggers are identical. I don't believe any of them have Hall Effect triggers. They're not advertised to have them, um, but they feel great nonetheless. Um, oh, another thing I've just noticed as well is, again, just how switch focused this controller is, and you might not be able to see it there. Maybe with a darker one, you might be able to. Where's it gone? I lost the controller. No, it's right there. Is There we go. You might be able to see it there. This one says, um, no, that's not it either. I'm so confused. You can't see it because the lighting probably, this one's using the Nintendo Switch notation, which is ZL and L and ZR and R, uh, where these ones are just using the standard LT, RT, RB, L, B um, for the bumpers and triggers. So this really is a Switch, very Switch focused controller, as you can see. Um, the Nova versus the Nova Lite, which is more geared towards PC gamers, but it does work on the Switch. So if you want a good, very good, well-featured budget controller for your Steam Deck, your Nintendo Switch as well, uh, and your PC games, then this will probably be the one you go for. If you want to spend, I think it's around £10 difference more, to get a very, very feature-packed controller here, you're getting something that's awesome. The only thing this is missing, I believe, is NFC. It doesn't have an NFC chip. Other than that, it's got all the features. Um, so um, if you're not bothered about the NFC for the Amiibos, Amiibo functionality, and you're more worried about your programming um, type stuff, then you've got your triggers there. So your, your, your programmable buttons on the back, which is a bonus over the standard controller. Um, and additionally, these have uh, these have um, actually they're not using analog triggers at all. So I was talking about hall triggers. These don't have hall triggers. These have got clicky triggers, exactly like the Pro Controller. Another thing to note: exactly how much they focus this on Nintendo Switch more than anything else. You haven't got analog triggers here. This one does have analog triggers. Not Hall Effect, but this does have analog triggers. So the light has Hall Effect triggers. The Pro the pro one, I'm going to call it the Pro one, does not have analog triggers. Or they don't feel like analog triggers anyway. They, I can definitely feel a button being pressed in there. And in the clear show, if I could look into it a bit more, I would probably notice that there's definitely just a button. Yeah, you, you may or may not be able to see it there, depending on whether the camera focuses or not. Um, but there's just a button in there being pressed, which is... Absolutely fine, because that's what the Pro Controller does. This is a Switch Pro Controller replacement, basically. Minus NFC, it seems to have every single feature. Pretty sure it doesn't have NFC. It's not advertised anyway, so I'm going to go with it doesn't. If it does, bonus. HD Rumble on this one feels nice. You can feel the difference between them immediately when you play with them. Um, I'm going to do a very quick Android test, and then we'll call it a day, because it's going to get to be a very, very long video otherwise. I think we're coming up at about half an hour already. So what I'll do here is I'll just get this switch out of the way. I love it when my table gets like this, just full of controllers and gadgets, love it. I'm just gonna quickly fire up my tablet. Right. 
what am I going to do? I'm going to go into a pairing mode. First things first, we're going to go into a pairing mode. Let's just clear all of this stuff so we don't see any notifications that we're not supposed to see. And let's go to Bluetooth. Let's get this in pair. I'm, I'm going to assume it's Android and Home. I'm just going to take a guess. Android and Home. Right. Looks like it's doing something. Oh no, it's trying to pair to that again. We're going to do this. Um, I might actually just turn the switch off if this gets annoying. Maybe I didn't hold it for long enough. Right, the lights are blinking away. No, it's it's gone back to that again, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Maybe I should try this one because this one didn't actually pair, did it? I might actually need to just go to their website and see how it is that I'm going to pair these controllers up, actually. Um, because there are different com button combinations that you need to press um, to to be able to pair with the different formats. Um, like with the dongle, you're going to be using um, the the X input mode and there's a, there's a specific mode, and I think it's just X for the X input mode. Um, so I think for the Nintendo Switch, so for Android, it's going to be B and Home. Right, two lights flashing. That's flashing for Android. Now we're just going to do a refresh here. Let's see if it picks it up. It has Games uh, Nova W. I wonder if that's Nova W for white. Um, you can access my contacts if you want. I don't know what you're going to do with my contacts, but there you go. Um, it should hopefully be paired. Try that once more. No, I, th I think I've uh, I think I messed that up. Would you believe it? I don't know how to pair a device. All right, let's try again. I must have done something wrong there. Pair. It did just go off, right? But there we go. It's working. It's decided to go into its PC mode, which we don't want. It's working. As you can see, let's fire up some dead cells, play some dead cells. This seems to be the game that I demo everything Android with, on everything on Android with. You can see my camera up there. I'd love to get an upgrade on that sometime soon to bring you even more higher quality content. Let's get some dead cells action going. So for, oh, it's very loud. So for games that support rumble on Android, there must be some or emulators, whatever, this will rumble. Um, I'm just going through here to see if there's any options. There isn't here, right, for vibration. So we'll not worry about that. But other than that, um, this is working nice. Let's go to play continue and let's just take it out quickly and then I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to wrap up. Ooh. The button mapping is the wrong way around. Um, there is a way of switching inputs, but again, I'll have to go to the manual to figure that out, so I won't do that right now. But I'm sure we can do a little demo without mapping buttons and all that stuff. Where shall I teleport to? Teleport to there. This game is brilliant. If you haven't played it, play it. Really, really good game. Right, I think we need to go this way. We haven't been this way yet, have we? There's a small bug in this jar. Something feels off. If the bug was potent weapon of sorts, is it potent? Probably nothing. Oh, right. I can pick up something. I'll pick up the bug as well. I don't know. Maybe not. Right, so you get the idea. Multi-platform controllers, 
that dongle is diverse as well because I've plugged it into the switch. So it's going to work just with the PC, but you can run it in a wired uh, 2.4 gigahertz mode as well using that dongle. I don't know if it's going to work on Android. Should I try it just for the sake of it because we're here? Why not? Um, it was this controller, I think it was, that it was working with. So let's just press that button and see what happens. So it's trying to connect to the switch again by the looks of it at the moment. I think I would probably have to turn it on with the X button pressed so or depressed so that it, um, it will pair to the dongle, which it now has. And it has detected it because it's working and it's gone back to this thing again. Let's go back to where we were on oh, it's closed dead cells completely. So that's still connected by the looks of it. This is still one of which controller it's going to use. Come on, which one are you going to use? No, it's not using this one. It's using this one. Maybe just because it's on. What if I turn it off? Because it did detect this being connected and it is paired. So that's off now. Right, now this is working. So you can see how diverse these controllers are, right? With that dongle, you know, it was your oyster. I wonder if I plug into my Xbox if it will work. I might have to try it out. If you're interested, let me know. I'll try it and test it and let you know if it works. Um, I won't start playing again because I'll get involved and forget about uh, this video. Um, on that note, I will leave a link to where you can pre-order these controllers from the official website and also from Amazon um, uh, on the in the actual description section below. Um, if you're wondered when you can get your hands on them, you'll hopefully get your hands on these when they officially go on sale on the 15th of April 2024. Um, Pre-orders have already begun as of the 14th of March, so you can go and pre-order them straight away. Honestly, awesome controllers. The cases they've come in are just fantastic. You can house your receiver in there. If you want to do what I did, buy them both. Get the receiver and the controllers. And then you can actually swap and keep your receiver and your pro controller in one of these lovely cases that come included. For that price, right? you're talking about, I think, 25 and 35 um, pounds or dollars. Um, you're well under the pro official pro controllers. You're getting great functionality and feature sets um, and really, really well built controllers from a very respectable company making awesome awesome gaming accessories for us so i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please leave a thumbs up any questions in the comment section below and if you haven't already done so please hit that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner to support my channel and help me keep bringing you fantastic content that i hope you enjoy watching thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video